Hope you guys enjoyed that taste of uh, Japanese goodness and rock and roll. Um, there's also a love story going on in, in Wild Zero that's yeah. I think kind of the heart of the movie in a lot of ways. It's a uh, our young Ace, you know, the burgeoning teenager on the edge of manhood, fall, finds the love of his life, and uh, through the course of the evening with the, the zombies and the aliens and the yakuza and the gangsters and that guy in those really tight spandex shorts. Who was really frightening. <laughs> um, yeah, he, wasn't he finds out some at. secrets about this girl, which we won't give away. Right. That uh, throw him into some questions about his own sexuality, and uh, I think that becomes a big message throughout the film. It's oh, like, yeah, I know, forgot that part. Yes. I need to kill more the one thing you cannot accuse Wild Zero of is boring. That's any right. Stretch. Um, if anything, you can almost accuse it of having too much going on. Mm-hmm. Has a lot of gore. Yeah, tremendous amount of gore. Uh, most of it on set effects. There are some CGI, but oh, uh, not, not too much. Um, yeah, no. It's all good. And by the time it hits, it's a rock and roll filled, you know, samurai sword swinging machine mm -hmm. gun climax. I think that uh, most people are on their feet. So. If you like zombie movies, you know, try out the Japanese version. It's almost yeah. the same thing because all the all the people are Caucasian, all the zombies are all Caucasian. Zombies, yeah. So if you like horror zombie movies, you'll like this just the, as much. Yeah, <laughs> you know, except that the, all the leads are Japanese. It is subtitled, of course, mm -hmm. a Japanese production. Uh, the film was made actually as a, a vehicle for Guitar Wolf. Uh -huh. The director was, uh, you know, had made some rock videos for him, and oh, he had no, yeah. actually no aspirations to make a feature film at oh. all. He just was like, So, oh, Guitar Wolf is an actual... Actual band. They're oh. actually very huge in Japan and um, had become quite big in the States in the last five, ten years. No, oh, I just never yeah. heard of them. Yeah, they're just, they're a real strong punk band um, and really are exactly as they're portrayed in the movie. Just, mm -hmm. you know, drunk, loud, motorcycle riding. That's just who they are. Oh. <laughs> But, so it was a vehicle for them, and they, they persuaded this director to go ahead and make the film. It's the only film he's ever made, and uh, he oh. says he doesn't really want to ever make another one, which is... It was really good, I Yeah, I, which is kind of a, a bad thing for me. I really, really love this movie. So, um, so what do you think about Wild Zero, Miss Mia? I would give it at least a seven. At least a Very seven. Very watchable. Yeah, I think there's a lot going on in it. It's a... I like it a lot. You know, it's got a like I said, it's got all the horror elements mm -hmm. and it has comedy elements, but yes. they're not so goofy that they detract, which right. is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also have you know that love story, which I think works really well. I think it is is interesting. You would like that. Oh, it's so it's so different. I wonder I mean, about you sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, and it's you know, it's got, it's got a lot a lot going on to be appreciated. So and it's got that killer soundtrack. So. I actually uh, am going to go and give it a 9. Oh, well, that's very I, I good. I really like Wild Zero a lot. So uh, oh. pick it up, guys, and remember, rock and roll! Fucking balls! This is a Guilty pleasures for the week. Don't mind me, I'm just messing around with my collectibles. 
I like to collect the, the macabre, the odd, and the interesting. Like this. My favorite figure that just came out by Spawn. Her name is Elizabeth Bathory, and she was actually a real life vampire that lived way back when. You see, she believed that if she bathed in the blood of virgins, she would maintain her beautiful appearance for all of eternity. And that was working until the townspeople found out and they walled her up and left her there to starve. Really nice, intricate figure. I highly recommend it. And of course, everybody remembers of the kindest and gentlest vampire, Grandpa Munster. Remember him from that black and white TV series? Gotta love him. Well, between these two vampires, I came up with my guilty pleasure for the week. And that, my friend, is Fright Night. Welcome to Fright Night. Fright Night is a cool vampire flick from the mid-80s directed by Tom Holland, who later launched the Child's Play franchise. The plot is quite simple. William Ragsdale of Herman's Head, for you TV junkies out there, stars as Charles Brewster, whom discovers a vampire played by Chris Sarandon from The Princess Bride is living right next door to him. When his girlfriend Amy and his best friend Evil Ed don't believe him, he recruits the help of a, the local horror show host and his favorite hero, Peter Vincent, played by the wonderful Roddy McDowell in one of my favorite roles of his. The name was a takeoff on Peter Cushing and Vincent Price, of course. It's clear that he loved this character and it shows in his over-the-top performance. You, Peter Vincent, ready to do battle with the undead. Peter, this is serious. This was a prime example of how an established quality actor can elevate a film to a higher level when he takes the part seriously enough and the director makes the best use of his talents. When grouped together with the state of the art, or its time, makeup and FX, what we have is a creative little horror movie. Here's more of Fright Night. <laughs> 